We've now got a fairly basic but functional API token system set up. We have API token entities which we can relate to a user. So now we need to think about how we're going to actually authenticate a user using the API tokens. And what we're going to do is we're going to create something called an authenticator, a custom authenticator which will be used simply for authenticating a user using an API token. And so the way that we do this is we're going to use the uh, maker command like we did for making the API token. And the command is this. So PHP bin console. And this time it is make auth. And so we hit enter. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience. And if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon, and welcome. Okay, what style of authentication do you want? It will ask you, so we'll go with uh, empty authenticator, which is the default, the class name of the authenticator to create. So it needs to be something quite descriptive. In our case, we want it to be an API token authenticator. Let's just call it that. So API API token authenticator. And that is it, would you believe? So now we should have an API token authenticator. Let's go over to our source file and then in security, you'll see a new file here, API token authenticator. And don't worry, this might look a little bit scary at first, but I'll talk you through all of these things. Basically what happens is, the first method to be called is support. So a request will be sent into your application and then what it will do, it will hit this method. Okay, regardless of whether you're saying you want to authenticate with uh, API tokens or not, it will still hit this method because it is this method which makes the decision, should this authenticator be called into play here? Is it relevant? And so in order to authenticate using this authenticator, the supports method needs to return a Boolean and that Boolean needs to be true. Okay, so before we go any further, let's just give that a go. The first thing we'll do is we'll just die and dump you are here, just to show that this method is actually being called. So you are here and then I've got Postman open. So I'm just gonna go over to Postman and I'm firing a request at uh, localhost API manufacturers. So let's hit go. Okay, and so we get you are here. So we have hit that request. So, and like I say, in order for this authenticator to be called into play to perform the authentication, then we need to return a true from here. So before we do that, just to show that that will take us on to the next step, I'm just gonna hard code, uh, or I'm just gonna return true from this method. And then that should take us to this method here. So again, I'll die and dump out uh, we'll just put the name of the method. So this might look a little bit tedious, but like I'm teaching in baby steps, but if you've never done this kind of thing before, it's good to know how these things work, how the mechanics of it all um, works. So we're returning true from supports, which means yes, use this authenticator, and then it'll move on to the next method in this authenticator, which is the authenticate method. Back to Postman. Okay, and so I've now hit the next step, authenticate. So you're probably thinking, well, what would happen if that method hadn't returned true? And if it hadn't, it would have just carried on its way. So we shall return false. It would have just carried on its way and done its normal thing without actually using this authenticator. So what I'm expecting back here is just a normal response as if we're not using any kind of authentication. Let's test that theory. Okay, and so as you can see, we've got our data back here and that has happened. So we've managed to get the data back without authenticating. But we don't want to do it that way, we want to actually authenticate. So what condition should we apply here to say that yes, we want to authenticate using this authenticator? We're using a token, what we're gonna do is pass that token as a header. And so here, we'll just check for the presence of that header. So we shall return. And as you'll notice, we have the request which is being passed in here. So request headers has, and then we need a key. And so we shall just call this X API token. 
but you could call it anything. It's your application, but uh, this is something, this kind of thing is quite common. You can also see X, Auth token, that kind of thing, all on a similar theme. They all mean the same thing, really. And so if we actually sent this request now, um, we're not actually passing that header. We're not actually passing that key in the headers. And so what we should see is the same thing as what we saw last time. It's actually going to be false. However, if we actually go to our headers and add that, so X API token, and then it could be anything because uh, initially we're just checking that it's going to get past the supports method. So I'm just going to put in uh, just some nonsense characters there, but that means that this key is present in the headers. And so it should move us on to the next step, which is the authenticate method. Let's send this. And if we look at preview, we have now moved on. Okay, that's all very good, but let's actually use a um, legitimate uh, token. So we'll go to our database and grab a token from there. Okay, and then we're working with the real thing from now on. So I'm just going to replace this in here. Okay, good. Let's move over to our authenticate method and we'll actually grab that API token and see how we can use it to authenticate the user. So API token, and again, you'll see we have the request. So request headers, this time we're saying get, and it is X API token. Okay, let's just check that it has a value first. And if not, we need to throw some kind of exception. So if null equals API token, throw new, and we'll see a um, exception that we can throw here, custom user message authentication exception. Bit of a mouthful, but it was designed for this purpose for using um, as part of the authentication, if some kind of error happens, uh, then we can actually throw this exception. And what we'll just say is no API token. No API token provided. For authentication, we have something in Symfony called passports. Now, typically, you'll use a traditional um, passport class, but because we're using an API token, we're going to use something called a self-validating passport. But we'll have a look at both just so that you can see how one differs from the other. So what we want to do here is return new self-validating passport. So we'll go and actually have a look at this. An implementation used when there are no credentials to be checked, i.e. API token authentication. So it suits our needs. The other type is passport. And so here you would normally also provide some credentials, e.g. a uh, password. But because we're just using an API token, we're not matching uh, a password up to an email or anything like that. So we can use the self-validating passport. And in that case, we just need to pass in something which represents the user. To represent the user, we use something called a user badge because a passport on its own would be of no use. You need something which is actually um, the owner of the passport. And so in our case, to represent that, that will be a user badge. So let's go and have a look and see what this does. We'll just read the comments at the top here. And as you can see, it says, represents the user in the auth authentication process. It uses an identifier, e.g. email or username, and user loader to load the related user object. So we're going to need to use the API token in order to find the user and load the user. So the first argument needs to be the user identifier, which in our case is the API token. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need a callback because we want to put some logic in here, which is going to help us actually find the user. So we're going to need to do some kind of query. So new user, badge, API token, and then we need to figure out how this should work. And so what I'm thinking is we have a user repository. Let's just go and have a look at our files here. We have a user repository. So I'm thinking we can add a method to this, which says find by 
API token or something along those lines. So let's go and write the code that we wish we had first and then we'll implement it. So user equals and then we need a user repository. So I'm thinking let's add a constructor at the top here where we can auto wire a user repository. And I shall initialize that. Okay, so we now have a user repository. So user equals this user repository. And we'll say find by API token. And of course, passing in the API token. If we don't find a user, we want to throw a user not found uh, exception. Otherwise, happy path, all has gone well, we can just return our user. Obviously, if we go and try this now, we're going to get some kind of exception because we don't have that method in our repository. So let's fire this off. Okay. And so we get an error occurred. App entity user has no field API token. You can therefore not call find by API token on the entity's repository. We need to now actually go and add a method to our repository to retrieve a user by an API token. So let's go over to our user repository. And I think we'll actually just drop it in at the top here underneath the constructor. So public function find by API token. Obviously it's going to need a token, so that will be a string. And this will return either null or a user entity. And so the way I think I'll do this is I'll find the API token in the database and use that, use the relationship on that in order to get at the user. So we're gonna need the API token repository also here. Let's write the code first and then we'll figure out how we're gonna get all of this. So what I'm gonna try is this, return this API token repository find one by and I just need to pass in my credentials here and so that will be token API token and then off of that I'm just going to use a null safe and that I want to get the user so let's go and have a look at our API token entity and here we have a method called get user so let's use that. And for some reason, PHP Storm's complain here. Null safe operator is only allowed since PHP 8. I need to change my PHP version in PHP Storm so that it's reading PHP 8. Okay, and so it's happy with that. So now what we need to do is actually have an API token repository on our user repository. So. I'll just drop the font just to make this a little easier to read. Okay, that's a bit better. And so just to recap on what we've done there, we've uh, injected the API token repository, so that means we can attempt to grab an API token from the database using the find one by method when we have that. We're actually going to return null if nothing comes back. Otherwise, we're going to get a user. And so let's go back to our API token authenticator. And if we get that user, let's actually just dump it out here. And so it looks like we are getting a user with an ID of one. So that's good news, we know that that's working. Let's actually move on and show you what our next step is. So we have two paths out of our authenticate method, don't we? We're actually going to find a user 
in which case we're going to return that user and if that happens then we have authentication success and so we will then hit this method here on authentication success and then we need to handle and decide uh, what we're going to do when a user does authenticate otherwise on the other side of the coin if we don't have a user and a use not found exception is thrown then we're going to have an authentication failure in which case we need to decide how we're going to handle that so let's actually get the dirty stuff out of the way first and we'll deal with authentication failures how can we actually set this up a good way would be to just go back to our token here and actually just change the last character or remove the last character need to remember that the character was c though okay so let's go over here and we'll just dump failing in our on on authentication failure method so we know that we are actually getting to the right place send the request failing okay great stuff we'll just return a message with minimal information saying that bad credentials have been supplied and so I'm creating an, a data array here and we're going to pass this into the response and then we're creating a message here using the exception message key and the message data, which should be something along the lines of uh, incorrect credentials or bad credentials. And then we just need to return a JSON response. The first argument being the data which we just created, and then the second argument being a authentication failure, which will be a 401. HTTP unauthorized, which evaluates to 401, as you can see here. Okay, so let's go and give this a go. Okay, and so we get message, invalid credentials, and as you can see, we have a 401 unauthorized response. And so this is all you need, really. You don't, if someone is uh, attempting to uh, access your application and they have invalid credentials you don't want to be giving them too much information just tell them enough to know what the problem is so that someone um, should be able to go and fix it if they are uh, legitimate however if they're not if they're an attacker then they don't have anything like enough information there in order to be able to go and actually take action which would allow them to get into your application and so that handles failing authentication however what about when we do authenticate. Now, under normal circumstances, say you're authenticating with an email and a password on a um, web-facing application um, with a user interface or something like that, then when you authenticate, you'd want to be redirected to somewhere, uh, another page, like a follow-up page after the login. However, that's not what we're looking at here. All we want to do is just for our application to behave normal and just send back data, which is all that our application does. And so in those circumstances, we don't want to be um, redirecting or doing any of that stuff. So from here, we can simply return null. So let's go back to Postman. We'll fix our token. I think I just need to put the letter C back on there and then fire off the request again. Okay, and so we are now authenticating. It's sending us back the data. Okay, so that really takes care of authentication. We can now use an API token in order to access our application, fire off uh, requests. So what we're gonna actually look at now is something which sort of goes hand in hand, and that is authorization, i.e. what is a particular user allowed to do because some users will be allowed to access certain data or do certain things which you don't want other users to do and so we're going to have a look at access control roles and permissions in addition to that because we've now added authentication it probably means that some of our tests might be breaking or breaking or may need updating and so we'll also do some updates to stuff we've already written if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.